Jeep Cherokee. This case was used in 1962 to 1979 Jeeps as well as early Fords. This is a popular gear driven case. I was originally looking for a more modern Dana 300 and I thought I had found one, but after a short 5 hour drive it mysteriously turned into a Dana 20. On the plus side, it was half the price of a local Dana 20 and it came with a T18 manual transmission, which will sit in my garage for who knows how long until I decide what to do with it. I'll drop a link below on more information about this case for those who are interested. Alright, let's get to the teardown. The first thing you want to do is to drain anything out of it. Once it's all drained out as best you can, you might want to power wash the case. I chose to leave it real grimy and makes everything really easy to hold on to. Go ahead and remove the five bolts that retain this rear output housing that is shown here on the right. Then go ahead and smack it around a bit with a rubber mallet or a wood hammer to knock it loose. This was a bit harder for me as everything on this thing seemed to be glued together with the strength of a thousand rednecks. Once it's off, I'm going to go ahead and set it aside, but if this is the part that you need, I'm going to go ahead and put a timestamp below to the rebuild of the rear output housing. To take apart the rear output unit, you're going to need a vise or clamp the yoke to your bench to prevent it from rotating as you move the large nut on the end. This is easiest with an impact gun, but if you have a large breaker bar or a pipe to slip over your wrench, it shouldn't be too difficult. Next, hit the yoke with a hammer to break it loose and you should be able to pull it off. Don't lose a small rubber ring on the yoke though. Next is the speedometer on the side of the housing. If you have a socket that can fit over the end, then go ahead and take that off. But if not, don't worry, it doesn't need to come off as long as the gear looks good. Next, smack the end of the rear output shaft where the nut was with your rubber mallet. If the speedo gear is still installed, then just give the shaft a twist as you hit it and it should come right out. Remove the speedo gear sleeve and make sure not to lose any shims that came with it. At this point, go ahead and get a good look at the oil seal, the speedo gears, and both bearings and bearing races. If the bearings or bearing surfaces have any marks in them, or if the oil seal is ruined, then you might want to replace those bearings. Since there was a water in mine, I'm going to go ahead and replace everything the rebuild kit included. To get the bearing races off, you're going to need a small punch or anything that can tap the races out of the rear upward housing. Getting the bearing off the rear output shaft is a bit harder. Go ahead and pick up a bearing splitter or bearing removal tool from your local auto parts store. What you can do with the tool is you can clamp it between the bearing and where it sits and then clamp the tool in a vise and then hammer the shaft out. Next we're going to pull the gears and the shift forks out of the main housing. Let's go ahead and take off the inspection cover and let's see what the inside looks like. Luckily mine didn't look too bad, just a little dirty, but a quick shot of degreaser cleaned it all up. With the transfer case upside down and the front of the case facing towards you, you can see the front output shaft is all the way on the right, in the middle is the idler gear and the idler shaft, and then on the left is the front output shaft with the housing in this picture. Make sure to take a couple pictures of the orientation of the gears to make sure they go in correctly. To remove the gears, we gotta start at the rear of the case. There is a bolt and a lock plate holding the, the idler shaft or the intermediate shaft in. Go ahead and remove it, and then you're going to gently hammer the intermediate shaft out towards the rear with a soft drift and a hammer. That means you're gonna be hitting the shaft on the front of the case. Once the intermediate shaft is driven all the way out towards the rear, you can gently remove the intermediate gear and all the bearings and washers that come with it. If you haven't already, remove the front output yoke nut, holding the yoke with a large pipe wrench or a bench vise. Remove the yoke using a gear puller or a hammer and a lot of patience. After the yoke is off, you can inspect the front output seal to see if it needs to be replaced. Next, go ahead and remove all the shift linkage, plugs, and switches from the front output cap. On the opposite end of the front output shaft is the rear cover. Once you unbolt it, make sure not to pry it loose with a screwdriver as there's a variety of shims behind the cover. Once you remove the shims, take a quick measurement for future reference. Use a soft mallet to tap the front output shaft towards the rear of the case, thereby removing the, the rear bearing cup from the case. If you look into the case, you'll now be able to see the set screw holding the fork to the shift rod on the rear output shaft. 
go ahead and remove it and if it has a safety wire you're gonna have to cut it to get it out of the way and of course like every other screw and bolt on this case the set screws were torqued way too tight and after failing to get them out with an allen wrench and trying to heat it up with a blow torch to get it out and bending a Torx bit, I gave up and had to go to the store. And after coming back with a proper Allen socket and a breaker bar, this just proves that proper tools save you a ton of time. Once you remove the set screw, you will now be able to remove the gears from the rear output shaft. Be careful when removing the shift rods from the front output cover as there is a small metal ball and a spring that go into a little groove behind the rods. To get the set screw out of the front output shaft, you're gonna have to hammer the front output shaft towards the front of the case to remove the shaft from the bearings. Once the shaft is out, you can turn the forks over so that you can get to the set screw on the back of the rod. Now I was trying to do this gently with a rubber mallet and a brass drift to try and get this front output shaft out without damaging it. Well, after spending way too much time doing that over and over again, trying to get it to come out, I eventually just screwed the yoke nut back onto the top and hit it and it just came right out. And with everything out of the case, it's time for a proper cleaning and then we can start putting it back together.